Whenever I want to use my spindle sander, it's always a pain. It's kept back against the wall on my side feed table, and I always have to move a bunch of things and lift it out of there and set it up on my table saw. And then I gotta find some place to plug it in. I really need to find a better spot for it, but mainly I just need more room. To make matters worse, I slipped and accidentally bought a brand new 12 inch disc sander that will also need a spot in the shop somewhere. I'd like to get rid of this little sander and build something to accommodate both of the bigger ones in the same spot. And this is what I came up with. It's a flip cart, but it's a bit different from the typical ones you may have seen before. See, I figured if I limited the rotation to just 180 degrees, I could do two things differently. Number one, I could easily get away with just using a single locking latch for each position that the surface is in. And number two, I could actually integrate power, so I don't have to mess around with power cords. So, this is what I'll try to build today. Let's get started. While my neighbors were at work, I took the liberty of dismantling their doghouse and liberating all the plywood that I'd need for this project. And to make things easy, I printed off the breakdown diagrams and got to work on the table saw. I could get all of the three quarter inch pieces from a single sheet of four by eight plywood. And there's just a handful of half inch pieces that I needed and I could get all of those from a four by two sheet. So the overall cost of material is pretty minimal. Once I had things cut to width on the table saw, I could trim them to length over at the miter saw. And I scribbled down the answers to life's most difficult questions. And before you knew it, I had everything cut out. The first step was to assemble the drawer, and the easiest way to do this, in my opinion, is to just use pocket holes. But just like most politicians, it turned out to be just a little bit crooked. So I clamped down some fences that are square so that I can true up the drawer frame before I fasten on the bottom. And then with a thin bead of glue around the frame, I can drop on the bottom and pop in some 18 gauge brads to hold it in place. And with a half inch plywood not being exactly half inch, this left an overhang around the drawer frame. So I took that off with my router and a flush trim bit. Next, I could start attaching one of the sides on the cart bottom. And to simulate the width of a drawer slide, I cut out a couple half inch spacers. Now, when I use the spacers and the drawer that we already made, I can find the exact location for the second side of the cart. Once I have things lined up, I just make a small mark on either side. Then with a piece of scrap, I can line it up and clamp it just inside the line to create a fence to align the second side to. And just like before, I trim off the overhang with a router. I wish I could trim off my overhang that easy. Next step was to put the back and the shelf together and then drop them both into place. I used a six inch spacer to help me get things into position and once I had it seated just right, I just fastened it in with some pocket screws. Now since I want the drawer face to nest inside the cart, I set the slides back enough so that things will be flush on the front. Once they're in place, I make a mark and then just fasten them in. Then using those same half inch spacers from before, I raise the drawer up and then fasten the rails to the sides of it. 
I have to shave just a bit off the drawer face so that it'll fit nicely. So I trim things down on the table saw and the miter saw as well. Being sure to remove the jokers, I use some playing cards to space up the drawer face to just the right height. Then I centered it and clamped it in place. Once it was secure, I mounted it permanently from the inside with several screws. Testing it out, and works good. Now I can start working on the cart surface. First order of business is to cut the sides and the supports over at the miter saw. A quick trip through the table saw takes off the rounded edges and trims them down to their final sizes. Next, I can mark and drill the holes for where the pivot pipe will go through. With all these pieces prepped, I can now go ahead and glue them down. Now before I put the support pieces in, I need to cut some notches into them to allow for the cords to pass through. So I quickly do that using the crosscut sled and the table saw. And then I glue them in and reinforce them with some screws. The flip top surface has a couple wings that jut out on either side, so I draw on the area that needs to be cut out and then I just make that happen over at the bandsaw. The sides also need to get some areas cut out, and had I been thinking, I would have done this before I fastened them onto the bottom, but I'm kind of dumb sometimes. So, now I have to mark out the areas to remove on both sides and then tackle it with a jigsaw and clean things up with a file. Drilling the holes for the pivot pipe. And I wanted to make the front face plate of the flip surface removable for easy access to the power strip. So instead of unsightly screws in the front, I wanted to inlay some magnets. Now I'm adding some lockable casters. And finally, we can marry these two parts together. I picked up this 15 amp surge protector and immediately destroyed it by nipping off the plug. Then I thread the cord through the center notch of the front support, through a T connector, and then out through one of the black iron pipes. Once I pull the slack out of the line, I screw everything up. I mean, I, I screw everything together. I made a small stabilizing block that I glue in just under the T-connector. And once that's dry, I use a pipe hanger to securely fasten the pipe to it so that the pipe can't shift side to side and so that the pipe will rotate with the surface. And I added these oversized flanges to aid in supporting the surface. Plus, they kind of look cool. The power strip got mounted against the front support, and then I could mark where each of the pipes needed to be trimmed and take care of that with the angle grinder. Once they were both cut to size, I could screw them both in and tighten them down. I temporarily fastened down the surface so that I could test out the rotation and so that things are in place for me to mount the locking hardware.
Now I can add a new plug to the end of the cord I cut. When doing this, just remember, the black wire goes to the brass screw, and the white wire goes to the silver screw. Now if you already knew that and this is easy for you, then you can give yourself a new challenge and do this step while it's plugged in and you're standing in a bathtub full of water. Next, I decide to make a couple of fancy looking drawer pulls. Because what's a piece of shop furniture without adding some unnecessary walnut, right? And then I can put these back in. And now it's time to mount the tools. I start with the bottom tool first and drill out the mounting holes. Drilling a hole for the plug. And then setting it in place. Here I carefully flip the surface and then route the power cable through the notches in the supports. And the other sander is mounted to the other surface and the power cord gets tucked down and out of the way in a similar fashion. And now I can go around and fasten down the top. Last step is to plug in both tools into the power strip through the front panel and give it a test. And I made some caddies to hold all the sander components and I place them into the lower drawer. And of course a little bit of oil brings out the color of the walnut. Yeah, that looks good. Next, I pull the old sander out and I push the new cart back into position. And with that, it's done. What was it that Hannibal from the A-Team always said? I love it when a plan comes together. I wanted to design a flip cart that wouldn't just conserve space, but would also be convenient to use. And I think I've accomplished that. The integrated power and the simplified locking system makes it a snap to switch between the tools. And with the added storage, it makes it super handy. Hey, if you enjoyed the video, please hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel. Also, let me know what you think down in the comments. I read each one and really appreciate all your kind words. If you'd like to build this for yourself, I'll have plans available on my website. So, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Crap. Where'd it go? It just vaporized. Huh. Oh, got another one. Oh my gosh. Are you kidding me? Oh, I am so stupid. Oh. You want to see what I did? Here, look at this. I just got done putting in all these screws to hold on the face. I chose the wrong size screw and they all came through. Ugh, what an idiot. Now I gotta make this face again. Oh. Wow. This whole part is gonna get cut cause nobody likes to watch Drew glue. Forgot to take the stuff out. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs>